It's umsum time. What if dishwashers huh? disappeared? Oh no! I just bought a new one. Oh umsum. To buy umsum merchandise, visit umsum.com. <laughs> Firstly, if dishwashers disappeared. Huh? People may have to revert back to the age-old practice of manually washing and drying their dishes. Hmm. Secondly, if dishwashers disappeared, in order to keep their dishes clean, some people may start eating out of their own hands. Hmm. Thirdly, if dishwashers disappeared, everyone may try to avoid getting dishwashing duties. Hmm. Fourthly, if dishwashers disappeared, inventor of self-cleaning dishes may become a billionaire overnight. Hmm. Fifthly, if dishwashers disappeared, sale of disposable dishes may skyrocket. Hmm. Lastly, if dishwashers disappeared, manufacturers of dishwasher detergent may have to shut their shop. Hmm. How does a lie detector test work? Simple. I'm some taught it how to catch a lie. Oh, I'm some. A polygraph machine consists of multiple sensors whose response is recorded in the form of a graph on a single strip of paper. Hmm. These sensors are attached to the person taking the lie detector test. Hmm. These sensors usually record the following: the person's breathing rate, pulse, blood pressure, and perspiration, as in sweat. Some polygraphs also record arm and leg movement of the person. Hmm. Now, when the test starts, a number of questions are asked by the examiner to the person. During the test, all the signals coming from the person are recorded on the moving paper. Now, while examining the paper, the examiner can see whether any vital signs change significantly during any of the questions. Generally, a significant change in vital signs indicates that a person may be lying. Hmm. How do portable huh? oxygen concentrators work? They work by taking oxygen from the atmosphere. <laughs> wow, um, some. In simple terms, an oxygen concentrator takes in air and removes nitrogen from it. Hmm. Our air is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Removal of nitrogen leaves an oxygen-enriched gas. This gas can be used by people requiring medical oxygen. Hmm. Oxygen concentrator consists of an air compressor. It takes in air from the atmosphere, compresses it, and passes it over porous zeolite minerals. Zeolite adsorbs large quantity of nitrogen from air because of its large surface area and chemical characteristics. The remaining oxygen-rich gas is used for medicinal purposes while the nitrogen is desorbed from zeolite under reduced pressure and vented out. Hmm. In portable oxygen concentrators, as high purity is not essential and feed gas can be discarded, size of the adsorbent bed is reduced and rapid pressure swing adsorption or RPSA is frequently used. Hmm. How do huh? batteries work? That is a secret. I can't tell anyone. Oh, <laughs> um, some. A battery works by converting chemical energy into electricity. A battery consists of one or more electrochemical cells. An electrochemical cell consists of two electrodes separated by an electrolyte. When the battery's two electrodes are connected into a circuit, the negatively charged electrons start flowing through the external wire while the positively charged ions start flowing through the electrolyte. This balancing of charge is important to keep the reaction running. Now, this flow of electrons through the external wire is basically electricity. It allows us to power our devices. This is how batteries work. Hmm. Also, there exists a semi-permeable barrier in the electrolyte so that huh? all the ions do not immediately coat the electrode and thus clog the system. Hmm. How does an electric bell work? No idea. I did not invent it. Oh, I'm um, some. An electric bell consists of a bell, an electromagnet, switch, battery, clapper, and a coil. 
when the switch is closed and electric current passes from the battery to the electromagnet. This leads to the creation of a magnetic field. This magnetic field attracts the iron arm of the clapper. As a result, the metal ball strikes and we hear a sound. Hmm. Now, this movement of the arm also leads to the opening of electrical contacts. This interrupts the current to the electromagnet and causes collapse of the magnetic field, causing the clapper to move away from the bell. Now, this movement of the arm leads to the closing of the electrical contacts again. Thus, the cycle starts repeating itself. As it repeats rapidly, we hear continuous <laughs> ringing. This is how an electric bell works. Hmm. How does huh? a pulse oximeter work? Shh. It is a secret. Oh, I'm some. <laughs> pulse oximetry is a test carried out using a pulse oximeter. This test is used to measure the oxygen level in our blood. Hmm. Hemoglobin is a protein present in our red blood cells. It transports oxygen from lungs to cells in our body. Pulse oximetry is based on the principle that oxygenated hemoglobin and deoxygenated hemoglobin differentially absorb red and infrared light. Hmm. Oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs greater amounts of infrared light and lower amounts of red light as compared to deoxygenated hemoglobin. Hmm. Now, a pulse oximeter has LEDs which emit red as well as infrared light. These lights pass through our finger and are detected by a photodiode on the opposite end. Finally, by measuring changes in the light absorption, a pulse oximeter is able to give us the oxygen level in our blood. Hmm. How does an air conditioner work? Simple. I blink and it starts working. Oh, I'm some. <laughs> An air conditioner has three main parts. Firstly, evaporator, which is located inside the house. Hmm. Finally, compressor and a condenser, which are usually located outside. Hmm. When hot air from the room flows over the cold, low-pressure evaporator coils, the liquid refrigerant, which is present inside the coils, absorbs this heat and starts getting converted to gaseous state. Now, this gaseous refrigerant passes through the compressor which puts it under high pressure and converts it back to liquid state. The extra heat which is generated during this process is let out using the condenser coils and an outdoor fan. This cycle keeps on repeating itself. This is how an air conditioner works and our <laughs> rooms remain cool. Hmm. How does water get inside a coconut? Simple. I put it inside using magic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Firstly, roots of the coconut plant absorb water from the soil by a process called osmosis. This water is then transported to different parts of the coconut plant. Some of it reaches the coconut. The liquid, which eventually reaches the coconut, is referred to as the endosperm. This endosperm acts as the food or nourishment for the coconut's growth. Now, a part of the endosperm gets converted into a creamy tissue and gets deposited on the coconut's inner surface. Over a period of time, this creamy tissue turns hard and the remaining endosperm ends up as coconut water. So this is how water ends up inside a coconut. How does a 3D printer work? Simple. Mix 3 and D and you get a 3D printer. Oh, I'm um, <laughs> some. A 3D printer uses a method called fused deposition modeling. In this method, a 3D model is printed from the bottom up one layer at a time by repeatedly printing over the same area. Hmm. First, a 3D CAD drawing is fed to the printer. The 3D printer divides the 3D drawing into two-dimensional, cross-sectional layers. These layers are basically like separate 2D prints which sit on the top of one another. The only difference is that there is no paper in between. Now, if we were to use ink to print them, it would not be possible to get the volume necessary to build a 3D model. Hence, instead of ink, the 3D printer may use molten plastic. The molten plastic is fused together using an adhesive or ultraviolet light. Hmm. How do mirrors uh -huh. work? Simple. They work because I'm some is so handsome. Oh, I'm some. <laughs> See, when light hits an apple, 
It absorbs all the colors of light except for red. Red is reflected back. Hence, the apple appears red. Hmm. Now, a mirror consists of a glass surface with an extremely smooth and thin layer of metal film oh. behind it. Hmm. When light hits a mirror, it passes through the glass part and reaches the metal film. The metal film does not absorb any colors of light. It reflects back all of them. Hence, we are able to see ourselves in a mirror. Hmm. But even snow reflects all the colors of light. Then why can't we see our reflection huh? in it? The answer lies in smoothness. Snow has a rough, bumpy surface. It reflects back light in all directions, while the metal film, being extremely smooth, reflects back light more directly. Hmm.